Hello and welcome to the Jargus Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the third episode of Dino Charge, A Fool's Hour. Now it starts out with Fury on Sledge's ship. Apparently he found a way back there. And Sledge is pissed at him because after 65 million years, he still had no Energens. So back on his bounty hunted prison on his ship, Sledge was storming around, telling him to be quiet. And one of them, with, with a mechanical arm, named a Scrapper, tried getting out. Said, oh no you don't, and he shot him with his laser. Sledge is sure a violent villain for the main bad. Don't see too many of those at Power Rangers. Be so aggressive from the get go. So I like that. And he basically offered his freedom in exchange for finding an energy. But who knows if Sledge can be trusted. But back in the base lab in the museum, all the Rangers are there. Riley is training with his sword using tennis balls. And Shelby is excited because she doesn't think she has to be a waitress anymore. Of course, Tyler's there and he is one. Well, a busboy at least. And he seems surprisingly happy about it. And Kendo explains that's how they blend in when they're not being rangers. Except for Koda, who comes out of a cave and just shorts. Yeah, like, Koda, do you sleep in that cave? He's like, yes, it's my home. Now we find out he found his gem of 100,000 years ago. Because once it bonds with somebody, that person stops aging. Sure be excited. And Chase, being full of themselves, he just says so smugly, I will always look like this. Eh, yeah, he is a funny one. And it's not a punching bag for the human eater like Jake was in Megaforce. But let's move past Megaforce. Because basically it means that Goda was a caveman. Who knows what he's been doing for these hundred thousand years. Apparently he did not learn English. So they go into his little cave and it turns out that his story is painted on the wall. And it's one figure and it shows that it's Fury. And he fought for his gem as well. And obviously he didn't take it. And Tyler shows him the picture in his dad's journal, and he pretty much confirms that, yep, that's Fury. Now before our rangers can have some more getting to know each other's past, the alarm goes off and they go to see it, and it's pretty much all the top people in Sledge's group. And they're being led by Poissantra. And for some reason, Koda looks really mad at him. The writer's just looking back and forth, it's like, who the hell are they? And if all that time it turns out they still didn't get married. Because she introduces him as her husband-to-be when Sledge arrives just slamming down to the ground. But Tyler, as well as Coda, speaking of which, Coda, when they just showed them all sitting there, he looked extremely angry like he was going to tear them apart. Or he points at Fury on a hill behind them. It looks like... He's signaling someone. He tells him, yeah, that's Fury. And before any sort of fighting shows up, Keeper warps in front of the Rangers and explains to Sledge that they bond with him now and he's not going to get that power back. And, with, and Sledge explains that he had to wait for all those years for a comet to go by and he used the energy nets from his ship to latch on and get back to Earth. Well, I guess that does explain why it took so long. Who knows how long it took to finish repairing his damage from his bomb that ended up taking out the dinosaurs right after he tasked them with protecting the Emergens. So Keeper disappears and they send a bunch of blasts at the Rangers. It seems to blow them up. But nope, they morphed right in front of it. But apparently they're no match for it. the monsters as they're there so far. In fact, they all get defeated and demorphed. And Sledge says that he's going to ransom the planet in one hour in exchange for the Energens. And instead of warping off, because it looks like he's about to, but he hits his shoulder, Sledge does, and a jetpack that makes him rise up in a big burst of smoke. And when it fades away, they're all gone. That's a bit of a unique way to make your exit, I have to admit. I, I'm liking you a lot, Sledge. You have a lot going for you. And then Riley is saying that they need to make a plan, but Tyler says, you go ahead, they can do it while he goes up to Fury. But Chase, showing he's also pretty intelligent, says they have to work together, they're a team now. Of course, Tyler, knowing that Fury is up to something, saying you had a hunch and that you don't have to be together to work together. No, actually, you kinda do. I don't know how I feel about Tyler. At sometimes, He's really awesome, and sometimes 
He's really freaking stupid. Don't know what this kid's problem. Don't even know how old he is for that matter. But he hides behind a rock when Fury's about to leave because Sledge talks to him. Right before he was about to find Tyler, of course. And he overhears the plan that Scrapper's gonna lead him right to their base of operations when he can steal the gems back. Meaning that hour is really not what they wanted to do. So Scrapper is chasing him as a little bit of a mechanical arm. So the Scrapper is stalking the other rangers a bit as a mechanical arm. They go right inside there shoot again. And Tyler's going quickly to fight them. Of course he does find them and he gets in a small spaceship to fly back into orbit. Back to Sledge. But while trying to take off, Tyler comes and crashes to him with his car. Holy crap, three episodes in and we have three cases of funny off the monster with something that wasn't their regular power weapon. I mean, first you had a little shovel, and then a steel rod or a girder. I still don't know what it is. And now a freaking jeep. I wonder what the next one is going to be. And of course some first soldiers come to help, but he destroys them easily with his saber's power slash. But back in the lab, Kendall is upgrading their chargers with some new kind of armor they can call upon that they hope will help them against Sledge's minions. But before they can discuss it more, I notice a lot of times they get distracted a lot by things that happen suddenly. They detect the battle. So they run off to it, but while it's going on, another alien comes to help out Scrapper and ends up demorphing Tyler. But fortunately, the other rangers arrive and Tyler tells what's going on. So Coda, I still don't know how he doesn't have very good grammar after so long. I mean, did he just stay in that cave for the majority of his lifetime or something? He don't know what a hunch is. But Chase said, in this case, it's something good. Notice he didn't say that Tyler was right to act the way he did. But he said he got it right this time. So it shows that our Red Ranger has room to make more mistakes. But he's definitely more accepting of a Red Ranger now that he came through. Now all five of them morph together, and we get to see the whole animation for the first time. And it's different than the last episode. Before they would glow their color and then it would show up their suit. But this time they have a black suit, and then they start glowing white as the camera shifts around. And then they glow their color when the Dino Head shows up to make their suit. I guess last time was a short version of that. It's still a really good transformation sequence either way. And so the fighting continues and Shelby gets her pink Triserazord. Just what she always wanted, her favorite dinosaur. And to beat Scrapper, Tata combines both his and Coda's chargers into his blaster for a combo attack that destroys him. Of course Sledge has another trick up his sleeves, he can send down a laser beam from space to make his monsters grow. Oh boy, I think you need more than a Zord for this. And it's true, because even when he summons his T-Rex, which he's Tyler still calls Rexy, they need help. So our good advisor Kendall tells Coda to use his Steg Zord to combine with the other two and make the first showing of a Dino Charge Megazord. Now on one hand it has a shield to block any attacks, and the other is a drill to attack with. And it can move pretty quickly, despite being so big, bouncing all around buildings. Yeah, Scrapper doesn't put up too much of a fight, but to finish it, they use the down charge final strike. Okay, we're still using that from Mega Force at least, but it makes sense, it's a finishing move. Now, it looks like you would just use the drill to impale him and blow him up, but no, because sticking out the shoulder it's, is the big head from the T-Rex. And it just fires a big blast out and it destroys him. And that was and that was just entirely unexpected. And it was a great because it looks so cool. And then finally the Rangers are working in the museum. At the cafe, all of them it seems. Of course Shelby is bummed that she has to do that again. She says, We saved the world in the morning and we served them then we served them lunch. And you'll get used to it. Ninja Force Rangers handled it pretty well as did the Jungle Fury Rangers. So they talk a little bit about teamwork, and Tyler wants to show off his burger flipping skills, but when he flips it, it doesn't come back down. 
And then they all look at Coda, who looks like he's chewing with his mouth full. With a big grin on his face. Yep, he put the entire thing in his mouth. Apparently they never saw him take it. So he's gonna be fun to deal with. And that's the end of episode 3. I gotta say, the excitement just keeps getting better in Dino Charge. I mean, first we had some great original characters that weren't derived from anywhere else. And our mentor lady, she takes no nonsense at all. Unlike Yose. She'll say things seriously and then keep going to get things done. And that Coda being a caveman, that was a pretty interesting twist. And it fits in with this theme of dinosaurs. And like how they didn't go too far out of the way to, sh to tell us all about it. Pretty had a few lines and it, it's been shown more in his actions and mannerisms more than anything else. But I think now that he's with the team more, he's probably gonna start learning to talk better. Because I can see it in all the subtle little details. The actor is really putting a lot of effort into making that performance. So I'm very interested in seeing what he does. And Sledge made himself to be pretty intimidating despite not doing much this episode. But we probably understand what the routine is going to be for most fights now. Sludge is going to get a monster from his prison to try to get Energem. And they end up getting defeated. While the other rangers are also trying to get Coda. And Tyler wants to find his father. And Coda himself, I see him growing up a lot over the course of the season. This is just a fun few episodes to get started. And we had a first look at our awesome Megazord. I'm really wanting to know what sort of attacks it has next. Cause really, I can't find anything wrong with these episodes yet. I mean, just a few small details might be able to nitpick, but nothing major to detract it. So yeah, Power Rangers Down a Charge. Check it out whenever you can. It is definitely worth your time. And Zordon was wrong. You don't need teenagers with attitude. Because as we just learned today, it's so easy to be a ranger, a caveman can do it. I mean, that's all for this time. Now I'm Jargus Zero, and I'll see you for the next episode. Until then, let the power protect you.